Case 1. Point Pleasant UFO and Mothman Sightings, 1966 and 1967. Welcome to the first episode of UFO Mysteries at Nightfall, the podcast where we dive deep into the mysteries that surround us. I'm your host, Henry Thornton, and today we're embarking on a journey back in time to explore the captivating Mothman and UFO sightings in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, in 1966 and 1967. So let us take a step into the unknown. With UFO Mysteries at Nightfall, where mysteries unfold in the vast expanse above. Together, let's uncover the alien enigma. Point Pleasant is a city located in Mason County, West Virginia, situated along the Ohio River, which forms the border between West Virginia and Ohio. Point Pleasant is known for its scenic riverfront and the confluence of the Ohio and Kanawha Rivers. Point Pleasant has a rich historical background, with ties to events such as the Battle of Point Pleasant in 1774, a significant conflict during the early years of the American Revolutionary War. Point Pleasant has a population of around 4,000 residents. The city features various landmarks, including the Silver Memorial Bridge, which connects Point Pleasant to Gallipolis, Ohio, to Endyway State Park, located at the confluence of the rivers, commemorates the Battle of Point Pleasant. Historically, the economy of Point Pleasant has been tied to river commerce and industry, given its location along the Ohio River. The city has a small town feel with a close-knit community. In the latter part of 1966, Woodrow Derenberger, a 50-year-old salesman affectionately known as Woody by his loved ones, had a routine life traveling around the region selling sewing machines. Residing in Mineral Wells, West Virginia, with his wife and two children approximately 55 miles northeast of Point Pleasant, Derenberger was described as a steady and church-going individual. On the evening of November 2, 1966, while driving home on a dark, isolated road from Marietta, Ohio, along Interstate 77, a familiar route for him. Derenberger's uneventful routine took an unexpected turn. Around 7.25 p.m. as he approached the Route 47 interchange, just south of Parkersburg, he found himself almost halted by the intense brightness of a car-like vehicle rapidly closing in from behind. This dark, elongated object, matching the speed of Derenberger's truck, hovered remarkably close to the ground, approximately eight to ten inches above it, creating an unusual spectacle. He detailed that the mysterious craft proceeded to pass him on the road but then abruptly cut in front of his vehicle, continuing to travel sideways at a considerable distance. Derenberger later described this peculiar vehicle as charcoal gray, seemingly constructed from some metallic material and shaped reminiscent of an old kerosene lamp globe. Its distinctive features included a flat lower part and a dome-like top, marking the onset of an extraordinary and mysterious encounter on that Wednesday night in November. Upon closer examination, he scrutinized the vehicle and noted the absence of visible lights, but he detected a soft, fluttering noise emanating from it as it moved, casting an eerie, otherworldly ambience. The vehicle's size spanned both southbound lanes and berms, compelling him to steer his truck to the right side of the road to avoid a collision. With his foot firmly on the brake, Derenberger kept his truck's lights illuminated, revealing the dark craft that stretched across the road. After coming to a complete stop, he asserted that a man emerged from the side of the craft, which opened like a dropship door. This mysterious figure approached Derenberger's vehicle and instructed him to roll down his window. According to Derenberger, the communication that followed transcended spoken words. The man conveyed his message through waves of mental telepathy all the while maintaining a fixed smile without parting his lips. Describing the man as seemingly normal, standing at about six feet tall and appearing to be between 35 and 40 years old, Derenberger detailed the individual's slicked-back dark hair and distinctive widow's peak, creating a sharp V-shape at his hairline. Despite his regular appearance, the man's dark complexion and attire, which included a top coat, trousers, and a shirt buttoned at the neck, added an enigmatic touch to the encounter. Throughout their conversation, the man kept his arms folded and hands tucked under his armpits. 
Darren Berger asserted that, despite the outward normalcy, the man's clothing had an unusual blue and shiny quality, imparting a glistening effect that intensified the overall otherworldly atmosphere of this perplexing encounter. Through his open window, Woodrow Derenberger held his position, immersed in this extraordinary and unexplainable moment. In a brief yet surreal encounter lasting between five to ten minutes, Woodrow engaged in conversation with the enigmatic man who identified himself as Cold, sporting a persistent grin. According to Derenberger's later recollections, Cold claimed to be from a distant foreign land, assuring him, Have no fear. We come from a country that is not nearly as powerful as yours. We mean you no harm. When Cold inquired about distant lights revealed to be Parkersburg, Woodrow responded initiating a discussion about similar places, or gatherings in Cold's homeland. After just a brief exchange, Cold unexpectedly concluded the conversation and promised Derenberger, We will see you again if you wish. Cold reassured Woodrow that if he chose to inform local authorities, it was permissible. As this peculiar encounter concluded, the saucer, as described by Woodrow in later interviews, descended to the ground. Initially hovering between 50 and 75 feet above the road during their conversation, the craft landed and the same door Cold had exited open once more. Cold, along with another occupant, re-entered the craft. The door closed, resembling the sound of a car door, and the craft swiftly ascended into the night sky at a tremendous speed, disappearing without a trace. Upon rushing home, Derenberger, visibly agitated, shared the extraordinary experience with his wife. Her inquiry prompted him to tell her what happened during the encounter, leaving both of them bewildered by the inexplicable events of that evening. Intent on carrying out his initial plan, he decided to call the police after resuming his journey and getting back on the road around 9 p.m. Local authorities received his call, noting that Derenberger appeared visibly nervous as he recounted the encounter with an unusual being. He referred to as Cold. Woodrow Derenberger shared his encounter with Indrid Cold in various interviews, including one on WTAP TV in Parkersburg, West Virginia, shortly after the incident. During the interview, Derenberger described encountering a strange being named Cold after encountering a UFO like craft on the evening of November 2, 1966. Here is a summary of what he said during the interview Derenberger described Cold as looking like an ordinary human being but with a deep suntan. He mentioned that Cold's hair was dark brown combed straight back, and he had a good tan overall. Despite appearing normal, Cold had a large grin, kept his arms folded with hands under his armpits, and communicated with him through telepathy. Cold, according to Darren Berger, asked about his name and reassured him not to be frightened, claiming they meant no harm and wished only happiness. Cold identified himself as being from the planet Lanulos in the galaxy of Ganymede. He emphasized a message of peace and unity suggesting that humanity should strive for understanding and harmony. Throughout the interview, Derenberger conveyed the surreal nature of the encounter, highlighting Cold's telepathic communication and the strange, calming aura that accompanied the interaction. Woodrow Derenberger, at the time of the UFO encounter in 1966, was a 50-year-old sewing machine salesman living a seemingly ordinary life in Mineral Wells, West Virginia. Several factors could contribute to considering him a potentially reliable witness. Derenberger's occupation as a sewing machine salesman suggests a stable and conventional lifestyle. There is no indication that he had a background or motive for fabricating elaborate stories about extraterrestrial encounters. Described as a churchgoer and a family man, Derenberger had a reputation for being a sober and responsible member of his community. His involvement in church activities adds a layer of credibility to his character. Prior to the encounter, Derenberger was not a public figure or known for seeking attention. The sudden emergence of his story in the wake of the UFO encounter adds to the notion that he was not seeking fame or notoriety. Derenberger promptly reported the encounter to local authorities. This swift action indicates a genuine desire to share his experience and seek an explanation for the extraordinary events he claimed to have witnessed. While details may vary in different retellings, Derenberger's core account of encountering a strange being named Cold and his UFO-like craft remains consistent in various interviews and writings. Derenberger's description of feeling calm and reassured during the encounter despite its unusual nature aligns with the psychological response expected from someone genuinely experiencing an extraordinary event. Following Derenberger's claims of encountering Indrid Cold and the UFO-like craft, 
his story became a focal point of attention in the Point Pleasant, West Virginia area. The reactions from the local community and beyond were mixed, reflecting the polarizing nature of UFO-related incidents. The local community showed significant interest in Derenberger's account. Some individuals were fascinated by the story, while others were skeptical, attributing the encounter to various explanations, including hoaxes or misinterpretations. The media, both local and national, picked up on Derenberger's story, amplifying its reach. Interviews and articles portrayed the encounter and its aftermath, contributing to public awareness and speculation. Derenberger faced public scrutiny and skepticism, with some questioning the validity of his account. The extraordinary nature of the events and the lack of concrete evidence fueled debates about the credibility of UFO encounters. Despite public scrutiny, Derenberger remained consistent in his narrative. He repeatedly shared details about the encounter in interviews, maintaining key elements of the story. Derenberger's life was profoundly affected by the encounter. Not only did he report subsequent experiences and encounters, he also continued to share his story in the years that followed. His dedication to recounting the events, despite the challenges and skepticism, suggests a genuine belief in the authenticity of his experience. While Woodrow Derenberger's encounter remains controversial and subject to interpretation, his consistency in sharing the story over the years is notable. Whether regarded as a witness to an otherworldly event or as a participant in a complex cultural phenomenon, Derenberger's account continues to be part of the enduring legacy of paranormal lore in Point Pleasant. Woodrow Derenberger's UFO encounter and his subsequent claims of meeting the alien Indrid Cold in the Point Pleasant area occurred during a period of heightened UFO activity in the region throughout the 1960s. While the events are inherently challenging to verify, some reported sightings and incidents in the area seem to contribute to the overall atmosphere of mystery and intrigue. Around the same time as Derenberger's encounter, there were numerous reports of sightings of a creature known as the Mothman in the Point Pleasant area. Witnesses described a large, winged creature with glowing red eyes. In the months following Derenberger's encounter, there were other reported UFO sightings in and around Point Pleasant. Witnesses described seeing strange lights and objects in the sky, contributing to the perception that the area was experiencing an unusual level of aerial activity. Some individuals claimed to have encountered mysterious men in black in the aftermath of UFO sightings, adding an element of government conspiracy and secrecy to the overall narrative. These encounters were sometimes linked to the broader UFO phenomenon in the Point Pleasant area. Over time, the events in Point Pleasant, including Derenberger's encounter, became ingrained in local folklore. The stories were passed down through generations, and the area gained a reputation for being a hub of mysterious and unexplained phenomena. On November 15, 1966, near the McClinic Wildlife Management Area, on the outskirts of Point Pleasant, Five grave diggers were preparing a cemetery for a burial when they claimed to have encountered a massive bird-like creature with enormous wings. The creature was described as having glowing red eyes and a wingspan that stretched across the road. As the grave diggers observed this bizarre being, they were terrified by its presence. Three days after Woodrow Derenberger's UFO experience and the grave diggers' encounter with the strange creature, Newell Partridge, resident in Salem, West Virginia, about a hundred miles from Point Pleasant, had his own strange encounter. On the evening of November 15, 1966, Newell Partridge, a local building contractor, was at home in Salem. He noticed an unusual pattern of television interference on his set, which he described as a weird static-like sound. Intrigued by this disturbance, he decided to investigate and went outside with his dog. As he ventured into the night, Partridge reportedly encountered a large, shadowy figure near a field. He described the creature as a humanoid figure, with bright, glowing red eyes. His dog, a German shepherd named Bandit, reacted strongly to the presence of the creature. Partridge reported that the eyes of the creature seemed to have a hypnotic effect on his dog, causing it to become frightened and aggressive. After this initial encounter, Partridge claimed that the creature and his dog engaged in a brief standoff before the mysterious being took flight. Partridge noted that the creature emitted a buzzing or humming sound as it ascended into the night sky. Following this incident, Bandit, the dog, disappeared and was never seen again. This sighting by Newell Partridge became part of the series of reported encounters with the Mothman in the Point Pleasant area during the late 1960s. In the Mothman saga, 
Some of the most intriguing aspects are the reported sightings that seemingly occurred in different locations within a relatively short time frame. After Newell Partridge's sighting in Salem, West Virginia, on November 15, 1966, there were later reports of Mothman sightings in Point Pleasant, 100 miles away. These subsequent sightings occurred only hours later on the same night. Witnesses in Point Pleasant described encounters with a large, winged creature with glowing red eyes, resembling the descriptions provided by those who had previously witnessed the Mothman. The reported sightings included not only the creature itself, but also the eerie humming or buzzing sound, which was often associated with Mothman encounters. The proximity of these events, both in terms of time and distance, added to the mystique and speculation surrounding the Mothman phenomenon. The idea that similar sightings occurred in different locations within a short time frame fueled discussions about the nature of the creature and its potential ability to cover vast distances quickly. On the night of November 15, 1966, two couples, Roger and Linda Scarberry, along with Steve and Mary Millett, were driving through a local wildlife reserve in Point Pleasant. As they drove, they noticed a strange creature on the outskirts of the Old North Power Plant. The creature was described as a large, winged figure with glowing red eyes. It appeared to be human-like, but had wings folded against its back. Frightened by the creature, the couple sped away from the area, but claimed that the creature followed them at an unnaturally high speed. As they drove, they watched as the creature flew very close by to the car, and its eyes emitted a red glow. The couples eventually made their way to the Point Pleasant Sheriff's Office to report the encounter. The story gained attention in the local press, and the legend of the Mothman began to take shape, eventually becoming a significant part of paranormal folklore. A press conference regarding the Mothman sightings took place in Point Pleasant on November 16, 1966, the day after the Scarberry and Millette sightings. The conference was held at the county courthouse, and was attended by law enforcement, local officials, and a gathering of curious journalists. During the conference, the witnesses, primarily Roger and Linda Scarberry and Steve and Mary Mallett, recounted their experiences with the Mothman. They detailed the creature's appearance, its large wings, glowing red eyes, and the sense of fear it instilled in them. The witnesses expressed genuine concern and described the creature as unlike anything they had ever encountered before. Sheriff George Johnson and Deputy Millard Halstead addressed the media, taking the report seriously and urging the public to remain cautious. They encouraged people to report any further sightings and assured the community that law enforcement would investigate the matter thoroughly. The press conference marked the formal acknowledgement of the Mothman sightings by local authorities. As news of the encounters spread through the media, Point Pleasant became a focal point for journalists, researchers, and curious individuals interested in the emerging Mothman legend. The name Mothman originated from the creature's association with a popular comic book character. The name was not initially used by eyewitnesses but was adopted later in media coverage. After the reported sightings and encounters with the mysterious winged creature in 1966 and 1967, local press coverage intensified. Journalist Mary Heyer, who reported on paranormal and unusual events in the area, wrote about the sightings in her column for the Athens Messenger. Batman, starring Adam West, was a very popular TV show at the time. Heyer, drawing inspiration from Batman's nemesis, the Mothman, used the term Mothman in her reporting to describe the creature. The name stuck, and it became the moniker commonly associated with the mysterious winged being that was reportedly seen in and around Point Pleasant. The creature's description, including its large wings, glowing red eyes, and humanoid features, resembled the concept of a man-moth hybrid, further contributing to the adoption of the name Mothman in media and popular culture. John Keel, a prolific writer and investigator of paranormal phenomena, was intrigued by the amount of UFO and Mothman reports coming out of Point Pleasant, so he decided to go and investigate the area. Keel, already well-versed in the field of ufology, arrived in Point Pleasant to investigate the reports and gather first-hand accounts from witnesses. Keel chronicled his experiences in Point Pleasant and provided a comprehensive examination of the Mothman sightings, UFO encounters, and the eerie synchronicities surrounding these events. Keel was not merely interested in the surface-level sightings of strange creatures or unidentified flying objects. He sought to understand the underlying patterns and connections that seemed to tie these phenomena together. His investigations often delved into the psychological and sociological aspects of witness accounts, 
exploring the impact of these experiences on the individuals involved and the communities that witness these unusual events. In Point Pleasant, Keel not only documented the Mothman sightings, but also investigated a wide range of strange occurrences, including reports of men in black, poltergeist activity, and other unexplained events. His approach was multidisciplinary, combining elements of folklore, psychology, and high strangeness to offer a more holistic perspective on the inexplicable happenings in the region. Keel's interviews with those witnesses who had reported the sightings were crucial to his research. He spent significant time in the town, speaking with locals who had encountered the mysterious winged creature and delving into the broader paranormal activity reported in the area. Many residents reported seeing strange lights in the sky and encountering unidentified flying objects. Keel documented various accounts of luminous orbs, unusual aerial phenomena, and instances where Mothman and UFO sightings seemed interconnected. Other witnesses shared experiences of encounters with men in black, mysterious figures who would visit and question individuals who had witnessed UFOs or the Mothman. These men in black were described as unsettling and had an otherworldly demeanor typically described as being dressed in black suits, often wearing black hats and sunglasses. They exhibit unusual behavior, sometimes speaking in a robotic or stilted manner. Men in black are known for their ability to appear and disappear mysteriously. The men in black were often perceived as attempting to silence witnesses and discourage them from sharing their experiences. Witnesses reported feeling threatened by these mysterious figures, and the encounters contributed to a sense of apprehension within the community. Some theories suggest that the men in black are not government agent, but rather entities connected to extraterrestrial or ultra-terrestrial intelligence. This aligns with John Keel's exploration of ultra-terrestrials, beings that operate beyond conventional understandings of space and time. The Men in Black encounters in Point Pleasant became part of the larger narrative of interconnected paranormal phenomena. The Men in Black aspect of the Mothman events adds a layer of complexity and mystique to the overall story. Some skeptics view Men in Black encounters as hoaxes or psychological phenomena. Some witnesses reported experiencing precognitive dreams or receiving mysterious phone calls that seemed to predict future events. Keel documented instances where individuals claimed to have received messages or warnings before significant incidents occurred. Keel explored the psychological impact of these encounters on the witnesses and the community as a whole. Many individuals reported heightened levels of anxiety, paranoia, and a general sense of unease during the period of increased paranormal activity. Some witnesses often reported electronic disturbances such as malfunctioning radios, televisions, and phones, both during and after their encounters. November 16, 1966, just one day after the Scarberry and Millette sighting, Marcella Bennett, along with her brother Raymond Wamsley and his wife Virginia, had gone to visit the wildlife reserve where previous Mothman encounters had taken place. As they strolled near the old North Power Plant, they reportedly encountered the large, winged creature. In the chilling encounter, the creature grabbed Bennett and lifted her off the ground, only to release her after a brief moment. Describing the creature, Bennett provided a consistent account with other Mothman sightings. She reported seeing a large figure with wings, glowing red eyes, and a humanoid shape. The encounter left Bennett shaken, and the trio rushed back to their car, leaving the area in fear. What makes Marcella Bennett's sighting particularly noteworthy is the physical contact she claimed to have had with the creature, unlike other sightings where witnesses observed Mothman from a distance. This created a climate of heightened anxiety and intrigue in the town. The Silver Bridge tragedy in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, marked a devastating event that occurred on December 15, 1967, and it became a pivotal moment in the town's history. The collapse of the Silver Bridge, which connected Point Pleasant to Gallipolis, Ohio, resulted in the loss of 46 lives and left a lasting impact on the community. Many have speculated about a potential connection between the Mothman sightings and UFO phenomena leading up to the bridge collapse, creating a complex and enduring narrative. In the months preceding the Silver Bridge disaster, Point Pleasant had become a hotspot for reported Mothman sighting. Concurrently, there were numerous accounts of UFOs as well as witnesses reported encounters with men in black. Some speculate that these occurrences were interconnected and may have played a role in the tragedy that befell the Silver Bridge. 
One theory suggests that the Mothman sightings and UFO phenomena were harbingers of the impending disaster. Witnesses reported strange premonitions, eerie phone calls, and a pervasive sense of foreboding in the community. Some individuals claimed to have received warnings about the bridge collapse before it occurred, adding a supernatural and prophetic element to the unfolding events. The connection between the Mothman UFO sightings and the Silver Bridge collapse is speculative and often viewed through a lens of folklore and paranormal lore. However, the timing of these events has fueled discussions about the potential influence of the supernatural on the tragedy. The collapse of the Silver Bridge was ultimately attributed to a structural flaw in the I-bar chain suspension system. The tragedy prompted a re-evaluation of bridge safety regulations across the United States and led to the implementation of stricter inspection standards. While the official cause of the disaster was structural, the paranormal events that preceded it have continued to captivate the imaginations of those intrigued by the unexplained. Since the Mothman events in the late 1960s, the town of Point Pleasant has embraced the legend and incorporated it into its local culture and tourism. Several attractions in the town are dedicated to the mysterious winged creature, offering both locals and visitors an opportunity to explore the folklore and history surrounding Mothman. In the present day, the supernatural events which happened in Point Pleasant are remembered in the town. A prominent attraction in Point Pleasant is the Mothman statue, erected in 2003. The statue, created by artist Bob Roach, stands 12 feet tall and serves as a visual representation of the legendary creature. It has become a focal point for visitors and a symbol of the town's connection to the Mothman legend. The town's Mothman Museum, established in 2005, is dedicated to preserving the history and folklore surrounding Mothman. It features exhibits, artifacts, and information about the sightings, as well as related phenomena like UFO encounters and men in black sightings. The museum attracts tourists interested in the paranormal. Point Pleasant also hosts an annual Mothman Festival, typically held in September, attracting enthusiasts from around the country. The festival features vendors, guest speakers, guided tours, and various Mothman-themed events, fostering a sense of community and celebration around the legend. At the festival, visitors can explore sites associated with the Mothman events, such as the TNT Wildlife Reserve area, where the creature was often sighted. Guided tours provide insight into the history and locations connected to the legend. The Mothman Prophecies by John Keel was published in 1975, this influential book by investigator John Keel documents the Mothman sightings and explores the broader paranormal context in Point Pleasant. In 2002, the book was adapted into a movie of the same name which starred Richard Gere. In 2010, Mothman, a low-budget horror film that explores the Mothman legend in a fictionalized and suspenseful manner, was released. There have also been many documentaries about the mysterious events that unfolded in Point Pleasant, such as Eyes of the Mothman. 2011. This documentary explores the Mothman legend, the Silver Bridge collapse, and the broader history of Point Pleasant offering a more in-depth and reflective examination. The Mothman legend has become a cultural phenomenon, inspiring various forms of artistic expression, literature, and media. Point Pleasant's embrace of the legend has not only contributed to tourism, but has also solidified Mothman's place in popular culture as a symbol of mystery and the unexplained. After the UFO sightings, alien encounters, and Mothman events died down, John Keel claimed that he was sitting in his hotel room when he received a message from Indrid Cold, the grinning man, who told him, stay away from Point Pleasant, leave, and never return. So that wraps up our episode on Point Pleasant. In future episodes, we will continue our journey into the unknown, unraveling the UFO alien mysteries that defy explanation. Stay tuned for upcoming episodes, where we will venture further into the unexplained. Until next time, keep looking up to the skies and never stop searching for the truth.